Hello everybody. Um, I've been entitled to present this work that uh, was done by University of L'Aquila and um, Americo Dominici. So this is the radar division of Select System Integrative. So they make either fixed or portable radar system. And of course, they suffer also from a lightning strike. And so the goal today will be to, uh, to see how we can simulate a portable radar system uh, that uh, is susceptible to lightning strike. Um, so basically, we talked this morning a lot about uh, the origin and the consequence about lightning strikes. I will not detail too much this now. Um, what I want to show you is um, the structure we would like to simulate. So the structure is uh, made of three parts. The antenna and pellet unit, you see here the, the antenna, which is uh, the yellow part that can turn around. It is uh, placed um, on a slip ring, which is attached to a pellet. The pellet is the gray fixed part here. Then you have a generator group. Uh, this is the second element. And you have uh, an equipment shelter group where you have all the PCBs that control the, all the device. So all the three parts are connected uh, together with a cable. And here you see the characteristic of the cable. And this cable should be at equipotential. It should be zero volt always. And it will not be the case when you will have the lightning stroke. You will see later in the presentation that you will have uh, um, a difference of potential between several parts on this, uh, on this cable, which is not good, of course. Each of the system are put to ground using, using um, a rod lightning connection. And um, another thing which is interesting is that um, the, uh, the grounding uh, impedance will depend if it rains the day before, if it rained the day before. So the, the, it's very important to know that this, this portable system will be placed on the ground. So depending if it is a dry uh, soil or humid soil and so on, the grounding impedance will not be the same. And it is not easy because you cannot design your radar system protection with a constant grounding impedance because it will change depending on the weather. Um, here you see more into details what we call um, the, the path that will use the lighting stroke to go to the, to the Earth. So first of all, this is the, the blue curve here. First of all, it will, uh, it will pass through the metallic frame of the antenna because we have to say this antenna, of course, is made maybe of uh, uh, many cavity backed, uh, uh, it's an ante antenna array, so you have many cavity backed elements, but for us it will be a piece of metal, let's say, for this analysis. As we said, as, as uh, the, the person from, uh, from uh, also said this morning, we have to simplify the analysis. So for this case, we consider a piece of metal. And this is perfect for the lightning strike, so it will jump on it, I would say. And then uh, it will go through the slip ring, uh, through the pallet, and then to the grounding roads. In the first assumption in this work, we start with the initial value of 30 ohms, but it could change. It could change depending on the, on the soil. But for, for the first analysis that we will do, we will start with 30 ohms. Alors, the slip ring, what is that? The slip ring is used to bring the, the system to work. So, um, it is a, a ring of breath, and uh, you have all the uh, currents that are uh, needed to drive the system that pass through it, okay? And it allows uh, the, palette, the, the antenna to turn around, okay? And uh, the problem is that this uh, these ring, is, uh, is quite thin, and uh, you, ha you will have the energy of the lasting stroke that will pass through it. So you need to design it properly if you want to overcome uh, problems. And uh, uh, also the thermal aspects will be very important. So in the design, the connection between the antenna and the slip ring is done with a very uh, small impedance, and again, to connect to, connect to the palette, a very small impedance, 5 milliohms. So this is the description of the, of the problem, of what we want to, to model. Now, the goal, what is it? 
the goal is to evaluate the induced current you will have into the slip ring when you have a, a lightning strike that will be that will happen 20 meters in the distance from the uh, portable uh, radar system. Then we try to see what is the worst case. Is the worst case when the lightning occurs in front of the radar, lateral or on the back? And what happens if the soil, uh, so the soil impedance change? So 3 ohm, 30 ohm, 300 ohm, what is the worst case from the point of view of the current that goes through the spring? And then we will try to, alors for that, uh, CST uh, Studio Suite has been used. And uh, of course, first of all, we need to, this is the, the first part of the, of, the, of the work that has been done. And then we will try to, to see how much difference of potential you have on the cables. Uh, but this is the second part. So first of all, we try to excite the structure with the lighting uh, channel. So a lightning channel can be modeled as a vertical antenna on which the uh, lightning current is enforced at the base. Okay. And of course, we try to use the standard by the IEC to uh, specify the user-defined function that will be used as stimulus. Uh, please note that uh, this work uh, was done in 2007, three years ago, and now we have new normatives. So of course, we can, uh, as it was said before by my colleagues, you can uh, change the user-defined function, the double exponential, to find to match with the new normatives of IEC, of course. So here is, you see, the, uh, the model for the lightning channel. Here you have your, your portable antenna, the rod that put uh, the energy to the ground. Okay. What about the boundary condition? Well, what we choose is, uh, on the top, we choose a perfectly conductive plane, which uh, will simulate virtually the cloud system. And then the ground will be done also by a perfectly conductive plane. And uh, around, we will have um, a PML. So we will have open boundaries, perfect match layers. Then they try to make some, um, some uh, different case. What happens if the lightning strike happens lateral, front, or back from the radar? And they evaluate with CST Micro Studio uh, what is the peak current you have into the uh, ring, into the slip ring. And we see that the peak occurs for a lightning strokes that happen lateral to the uh, radar system. Again, we are talking about a ground resistor of 30 ohms. Uh, here you, you see the waveform, uh, black, uh, black uh, lightning, back, back lightning uh, respect to the radar is in red, and uh, lateral is in blue. This is where we find the maximum uh, current in the slip ring. Then we see what is the impact of different soil. So we will, uh, for, this, uh, for this time, try to change the ground impedance uh, from 3 ohm to 300 kilo ohms, and we see that the maximum of current is reached with a minimum value of ground resistor. This will be important for uh, SELEX to have some guideline into the uh, design uh, of the structure. Then, of course, the work was including more, much more than this, but the rest of the documentation is classified. So this is what can be published. And this work has been published to the conference RadarCon 2007 in Rome. Of course, Select is making much more than this with the software, but this cannot be published. So this is what they, they allowed uh, to show. Now, what we want to do is the following. So just imagine, uh, yeah, maybe it's there, we have uh, of three parts into the system, we have the cable, and we want to see after the lightning stroke what is the difference of potential between here and here, between here and here, because it should be zero volts, but it will not, it will not be. So, in, at that time, um, uh, it has been asked in this project to use um, ADS from Agilent, 
But uh, as I will say in the conclusion, we, can, we could do it very automatically with Design Studio or Keb and also Cable Studio. But in that time, 2007, uh, they were not into the CST suite. So, and uh, Selex has to use ADS, so ADS was used as a circuit simulator. So here, the idea is the following. We try to use the Thevenin theorem, and we try to um, replace uh, the APU, so the antenna pallet unit, uh, with a source, with a voltage source, and uh, in theory with a resistor to, to apply the Thevenin theorem, to be used with a circuit simulator, which is ADS. So in this case, what we try to do, we try to calculate what is the, um, the voltage source. Alors, as Thevenin uh, theorem said, you have to put a high impedance, to the system, so we simulate with Macro Studio the antenna pallet unit with, uh, in presence of the lighting stroke with a very high value of resistor to ground, 100 mega ohm, and we obtain the transient waveform of the 10 in voltage source. And then it is said that in order to calculate uh, the equivalent impedance, we have to switch off all the source. So we do so, and we obtain the frequency spectrum of the magnitude of the Thevenin theory impedance. At the end, we can fill the ADS schematic. So here you have the, the cable is modeled with a transmission line. So here you have the cable, here you have the generator, here you have the shelter, and here you have the antenna. And the uh, ADS will simulate what is the transient current flowing into the cables in red, we are talking about the current going from the antenna system to the generator. In blue, we are talking about the current that is going from the shelter to the generator. And we have, as you see, 400 uh, ampere peak current. Then we uh, calculate what is the difference of potential between, uh, in red, uh, the generator and the antenna, in blue, between the generator and the shelter. And we see that we have uh, 2,200 volts of DDP. And it should be zero volt. So, okay. So, as a conclusion, this uh, way to use either full wave and uh, circuit approach allowed us either to uh, study what is the amplitude of the current that will go into the slip ring, which is a very delicate uh, part to be designed, Second, to see how much uh, current and DDP we have on the cables. Today, I would say that uh, IDS is not needed anymore because we can do everything with Design Studio. And if the cable, if the connection would be more complex, we would have to use also Cable Studio as well. Huh? So everything can be done automatically today, two years later. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you. Any questions?